becoming a parent and also, you know, running a business is the biggest personal development thing you could ever do because it will test you in every single way. Welcome to the stage, Nicholas Bailey. How do I start the tribe? What can I do? What's the next thing I can do? Most unselfish thing a person could do is expand. No other option besides hard work. How they can live this three-dimensional lifestyle. YouTube, what's going on today, guys? I have my wife, Amanda Barely here. Welcome to another episode of the Billion Dollar Brotherhood podcast. You may be thinking, do we interview women on the show? 100%. Yet also, most of these men are either married or they want to be married and they're doing life together with their spouse, which is not separated from your business. So in this episode, we're going to be jumping into power couple questions that are taken by the men in this community. Again, if you want to join the community, you could head over to the Billion Dollar Brotherhood on Facebook. It's a Facebook group that you could request to join and actually ask questions just like this for episodes just like this. So you're going to say at the very end, if you have not hit subscribe on YouTube yet, hit that subscribe button. Also ring that little bell. Shouldn't they do that, honey? Yeah. You guys want to get notifications when we drop new videos. And also we have a whole chapter on how to be a power couple in Nicholas's book. Uh, the modern day businessman that you can pick up on Amazon. So make sure to go check that out as well. Um, today's questions that we are answering, we have not looked at. Uh, we looked at when they first got commented like two months ago, but this is just off the cuff, real and raw. So let's get into it. Yeah. So I'm excited to see what everyone asked. Um, the first one comes from Caleb Allen. And he said, I think it would be great to hear from you and Nicholas on how you all work so to so well together as a couple parents and business owners. So how do we do it, Nicholas? How do we work together and be married? You go for it. All right. So I think that it comes down to obviously a foundation. Um, you know, when you're building a house, the foundation has to be good for the house to be, you know, a good quality house. So I think the foundation for sure has been um, really important on how we can work together. And also I think, you know, working together as a couple, I think it really comes down to like personality styles, um, you know, your type and also what you want. So, you know, every single couple doesn't have to work together. I don't really advise it because it just kind of like makes your relationship a little bit more complicated because not only are you working together, but you're also like, sleeping together as a married couple. So sometimes that can just get like so much you're doing everything together. And, you know, when do you turn off work? When do you turn on like, you know, being intimate and being just married and, you know, some for us, I think it's definitely difficult because we both love talking about work and what we do and things we're passionate about. So for us, like when we go on date nights, a lot of people have like, you can't talk about work, you can't talk about business. But for us, you know, we don't really have like set boundaries like that because um, it's just kind of like hard to be like, you can't talk about something that you guys both love. You know what and I mean? you got to choose your heart because imagine if we didn't work together. Yeah. And then we'd be separated be with like any of each other's work or what yeah. we did. And we'd be separated every single day if we were to get stuff And done. we didn't want that. No, that yeah. was from the very beginning. Yeah. We were like, we don't want to be separated. So we either need to get two jobs working in the same exact location or we need to start a business. Yep. And we knew that the chances of having someone else put us in the same job in the same area at the same time, which wouldn't even work with a kid, by the mm -hmm. way, wasn't even something feasible. So that's what we yeah. went in. So how we do it is strictly by having two people creating a like-minded vision, using their skills, talents, and abilities to get there, supporting each other rigorously, mm -hmm. believing in each other, believing the best in each other, and supporting each other's visions. When Amanda has something she wants to do, I just 100% believe and support it because I trust her and I believe in what she's doing and she does the same exact thing with me. And so when it comes to being parents, like we always know that we both have the best intentions when it comes to yeah. being husband and wife. We have the best intentions when it comes to running a business. We have the best intentions. We're trying to pull out the gold in each other, help each other level up the, as best as possible and help each other navigate the curves of life and be like, all right, like this is, we're going to set family time. We're going to set date nights. Like this has been, it's easier when you're a power couple. Uh, married yeah then it is power couple with kids yes so now it's like you have your and we got like, a lot of questions about that yeah father son time you have you set the boundaries around that You're like i want to make sure i fill this bucket make sure i'm pouring into this area of my life just like the gym it's like man i gotta make sure if i'm if i want to get fit i gotta go to the gym 
am I pouring into that bucket? But I know if I put the time in that, I'm going to see results. So I do yeah. that inside the relationship, do it with Amanda and I, and we do it inside of the business and different seasons. We understand the ebbs and flows of when the business needs more time or we need more time or we need to spend more time as a family. And that just kind of ebbs and flows and being on the mm -hmm. same page of each other is really, really big. Yeah. Being on the same page is super important. And I, we check in every single day together on, you know, how we're feeling, what we're, you know, working on all of that stuff. So that's really important. Um, and I think, you know, everyone talks about, you know, balancing parenting and business, you know, going back to what you said, like there really is no such thing as balance. And if you try to make every single day perfectly balanced, it's like going to be so much pressure and so stressful. Um, and are we planning more kids, Nicholas? Yeah. Definitely. We're definitely planning more kids. What else are you going to do? I know, right? Kids make life so much fun. Like Kingston's at such a fun age that, you know, it just makes you so excited to have more and like to see him be like a big brother. And like, like today he was like pushing the stroller for like 10 minutes. And I'm like, oh my gosh, like whenever we have our next kid, like Kingston's probably going to be pushing the stroller the whole time because that's fun for him. Yeah. At least right um, now it's fun for him. Yeah. At least right now. Um, so he's obsessed with trash cans. Like I was skateboarding with him yesterday yes. and all he was we doing put is the other one out every single away trash today. can so that he could push it. Was it, what did he get taken out? Yeah. No, it didn't. The Weird. recyclables did not come. Weird. Um, so the next one comes from Christian Tapper, who's a part of a, our billion dollar brotherhood club. Um, he's so amazing. Um, do you separate your business lives and personal life or does it ebb and flow together? Uh, we kind of answered this in the first one, which we, I think it, you know, our life is our life. We don't like, be like this is, you know, our married life. This is our church life. This is our family life. Like it just, yeah, for us, it's life. It's yeah. And we it's started life, out that way though. Like we got married with nothing. So we built it all together. It was just a piece of who we were. Even the, the podcast, my social yeah. media, Gary V says it really good. He talks about documentation over content creation. Mm, he just good. shows his, he's just like, this is me. This is my yeah. life. I just got done going to the gym. I just got done in this meeting, but he does not show his family same. life. Yeah. It's, Totally true. Um, and I, I, under, I thing? understand that. I think if I was like super well known, I don't know if I'd be as um, open to sharing all about that stuff. Yeah. Um, another thing that he asked is what what has been the most rewarding and challenging things about being a power couple? Um, I'll go first. I think one of the most rewarding thing is being able to celebrate each other. I think it's so fun to be like, we built this together. Like we were both in that terrible situation, you know, BDV Live 2 when all the electro wow. all the power went out in the entire hotel during Nicholas's pitch, which is like where you know we make money on the back end of the event. And we're able to like really help more people in our, our business. And everything just will like got taken down. And we were so stressed out and we were so like, this is the worst thing that could have ever happened because it literally just like stopped our event for like two hours or something. And Nicholas's mic wasn't working. The lights are off. It was awful. And to know that like we went through that together and we both can like have sympathy for each other because, you know, it's not like I wasn't there. I was in there with you. So that stuff's really fun. Um, but I think the most challenging thing is sometimes we, you know, it's hard to like, you know, when one person's strong, the other person, like if the other person's struggling, then they can lean on the strong person. But if you guys are both feeling like crap and going through a hard time, then that's challenging because it's like, who's the strong one? Who's the person I'm going to lean on? Um, so I think sometimes that can be challenging. Yeah. For me, the, the things that I really enjoy with it is both of us doing things that are new. Sometimes you feel disqualified or underqualified and you don't believe you can do it. And then you know the answer is to go out there and do it. You both have these situations. And then it usually ends, like we never had a time where we're like, well, that didn't work out. It was usually, we just thought, oh man, I don't know if I can do that. I don't know if I can go out there and put myself out there that way. Mm -hmm. And so both of us having this place inside of a business where we're stretching ourselves that way, because other areas of life, where do you stretch yourself that way? Mm -hmm. So that's a really cool dynamic where you get to stretch yourself and I get to celebrate it and see that you were able to do it. Mm -hmm. And from the events that you've spoken at and the deals that you've done and the projects we've taken on and same with me mm -hmm. all the time feeling like, okay, I don't know if I could do this. Can I pull this off? And then we pull it off and pull it off. So that's been really amazing. And like you said, some of the hardest things around it is 
always having something that it needs to grow, that needs tension, mm -hmm. that needs to be focused on and, and a reality set where you can't, you're not coming home and going, oh, hey, honey, like everything's amazing. You see all these movies where it's like the, the person's going bankrupt, but the family doesn't know. So, yeah, you know, like yeah. that's that never is a thing. Like she knows the problems that are going on. She knows the wins that are going on. And so no matter what, like you can mix those up sometimes when like last night we were having a conversation, she brought up something and it just made me feel like I needed to work, 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 work. She like made a comment and I'm like, oh my gosh, like this is business talk to me. Mm -hmm. And it's like in the middle of the night. And so like, that's some of the things that come with it is things can come up as business talk and the worst situations when Kingston's feeling fussy, you can't have the conversation. You can't close the loop and you mm -hmm. feel like there's some type of animosity or conflict. Those are some of the yeah. things that are difficult. Um, and a lot of people ask the question of like, how has, um, our relationship changed since parenting and like how, how we've been able to navigate parenting and work life and married life. Um, I heard a quote that this lady who's like super smart and I don't even remember what the book was called. It was called like motherhood something but it was super it was very impactful book i wish i could remember she was a psychologist and she talked about that having a child is like having a bomb like blow up in your marriage and so like this child is going to bring so much chaos and just so much like craziness because you don't know what to expect with from a baby like their baby and so i think we've definitely had to navigate that you know you know, we're, we don't have as much alone time as we used to have. Um, you can't necessarily plan everything. Like right now, he's down for his nap and we don't have a nanny right now. So it's like, if he wakes up, like we're going to have to pause this and finish this later. So it's just like those things that can cause like more stress because you can't plan everything anymore. Um, like you used to, unless you, you know, have help, which, you know, thankfully we have help two to three days a week. Um, so that's been really, really awesome. But yeah, I think parenting also has made life just more meaningful. I think that, you know, if you've been following uh, Nicholas on Instagram, you saw that we just purchased 30 acres of land here in North Austin. And um, we would never have like thought about doing that, I feel like, if we didn't have Kingston. And we probably wouldn't be living here in Austin if we didn't have him. Because having a child makes you think about the future and makes you think about legacy. And I think now we're like really like thinking about how do we create our legacy. So that's like something that's been so amazing with becoming a parent is I feel like we're more long-term thinking than short-term thinking, which has been really awesome. So thanks Kingston for letting us uh, purchase 30 acres of land and move to Austin. <laughs> yeah. But it's interesting how it works out that there are a lot of hard things like a man is talking about where all day, you know, he's doing things and, and taking the attention away from what used to be a man and I's time. Yeah. I think also like we never had a, cons we used to do date nights, but it was just whenever. Yeah. Now we've been super intentional with every, every time Thursday. that we're together. It's more intentional with each moment as mm -hmm. long as, you know, there's also things where Kingston, like last night, woke up because he went to bed early and he was hungry and he <laughs> wakes up and it's like a different dynamic, but very yeah. that's very rare. And so the time that we do have together, especially our date nights and stuff like that, is very much so more intentional than it's ever been before. And like you said, more long term thinking different motivations of what's most important. My time has become much yes, more valuable and much definitely. more important. So that's my, my time dynamic. too. Like I'm not going to just like take a random phone call. Yeah. Like I need to know the purpose of this phone call. I'm not just like, cause it's important, you know, like I have to like find someone to watch Kingston or something if I need to like take an appointment. And it's changed my definition of success that I'd rather, I'd rather pour into Kingston than pour into other people and it's like in a priority list i'm like mm -hmm. huh. like i i would rather pour into him and if someone's taking away from me being able to pour into my son's life then i feel like that's out of whack mm -hmm. and so success for me is being able to pour into my family and my son and see him rise up and be successful more than me going out there and getting another sales call or going out and doing something else mm -hmm. it's just like it's just a different dynamic now where it's also helped grow the business because now i don't do that stuff and now people want my time and they have to pay for it. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. Um, I think it's been amazing seeing you as a dad because he, you know, before Kings was born, you were always saying like, I'm going to be the best dad. I'm going to be the best dad. I even got him a best dad t-shirt um, and a matching little onesie for Kingston before he was born. And 
I always knew you'd be an amazing dad, but I think it's just so awesome to see. Like, I love capturing the moments of like you and Kingston together reading or eating together or, you know, playing in the car because now he like wants to drive the car. Like he wants to hang out in the car. Yeah. And just like all the fun things like pushing the trash can in yesterday. So I think it's just amazing seeing you as a dad. I have much more appreciation um, for just your heart because I always know you were so loving, but it's just amazing to see how loving you are with Kingston. Mm, so cute. it is. Yeah. You're a superwoman when it comes to your mom. It's like weird to talk about because it's like uncomparable. Yeah. I'm a dad, but her Amanda being a mom, it's like, she's literally given her entire life. Like you've given your entire life for the last year and a half and a little bit more plus incubating mm. the little guy, <laughs> incubating, growing him, <laughs> And then to, you know, feeding him and changing his diapers. And like, that's become so much more of like your role. Over the yeah. Last. Like at first it was like, I was very active in a lot of the stuff. And then it was like, now there's times where half the day can go by and you've changed every single diaper and you mm -hmm. fed him breakfast and lunch and dinner and snacks. And this kid taking eats. Taking him to the park and Jimboree. Like and, nothing else. And all mm -hmm. these different activities to help him grow. And so, you yeah, know, even though I love pouring into him, like, at the end of the day, the way that you pour into him is like 90% of his time. And it's like shaping up who he's going to be. You know, yeah. Which is really cool. Yeah. It's a big responsibility. And then to see, but you, I, like, as soon as I he goes to bed, I feel like, like it's so exciting. Stuff. Yeah. Like it's like you have something, you like almost look forward to it. You're like, all right, he's down. I'm going to knock out all these things. Yeah. And I'm like, all right, he's down. I'm going to like rest. Yeah. Decompress. <laughs> oh my gosh. What just happened? <laughs> Well, if it's a stressful day, I definitely feel like relaxing, but um, I do enjoy working and I like to do lists. So, uh, but yeah, now like as a mom, I'm like the moment he goes to bed, I'm like, all right, what do I need to get done? Like, even if like he's watching something for five minutes on YouTube because he'll only watch something for like five to 10 minutes. Um, I'm like, okay, what am I going to do right now? Like, I'm going to do the dishes. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. And then it's like, oh, like we need to eat. So that, yeah, I definitely don't make Nicholas as much food as I used to do because I have to make myself food, which oftentimes I forget because I'm like trying to feed Kingston. It's like, I don't it's all guys. consuming. Send your gift cards, <laughs> gift baskets. Food <laughs> is not in my life anymore. Because Nicholas now has to make his own food. And I don't. I drink protein powder. Yeah. Over and over again. Yeah. And I, Yeah. We need to get someone to start meal prepping for us because I'm not about that life anymore. But I'm like bad at even taking the food out of the fridge and eating <laughs> it. Even if it's meal prepped, I need it to be served, which is pretty terrible. Nichols could live on Mars. He's going to have protein bars and protein shakes. You'll be fine. Yeah. We could all move fine. to Mars together. I literally could live off of that stuff for sure. <laughs> and then ice cream's frozen. So you just freeze ice cream and send it up. So that's good. Totally. Uh, I think we have one last question here. Who has the most preference and how do you navigate that? That was from Jeremy Holcomb. Like, I don't exactly know what this question means. I'm very who has the most preference? But you I, have probably way more preference. Yeah. Like, you're the one who chooses all the things to do. Yes. And I'm fine with all of them. Yeah. You're very go with the flow. Yeah. It's like, all right, where, what do you want to do? I'm like, cool. Because I, I really like. And I'm the planner, being, too. I really like people being able to do what they like to do. And as long as I don't hate it, I'm like, cool, that sounds good. Like, I don't, I kind of like that too. Mm -hmm. And if you like it and I kind of like it, then I love it. Whereas yeah. if I love it, I want to really love it. If I'm picking it, I want it to be like something I really love. If I'm, if I don't really love it, I'd rather someone else actually love it so that they can experience something they love. So like yeah. you're playing tennis, I don't love playing tennis, but I'd play tennis every day if you wanted to play tennis. Mm -hmm. and I've never said no to it because you love tennis. Yeah. And I like it. Mm -hmm. Now, if you love it and I hate it, I don't watch all the Audrey Hepburn movies because I'm like, mm, it's not something I really care about. Yeah. But if on a date night or or when we're picking movies, I'd watch it mm -hmm. because I'd rather you watch something that you love and you know you want to do. It's kind of like the this the good lady who's cut my hair yesterday. Yeah. She wants to open up her shop. So we talked about it the whole time because I just love the fascination that she is wants to open up her own barber shop. Mm -hmm. Like I love that she wants to do that. That I want to talk about something that she cares about just because she's pat it's interesting to me. I'm like, man, it's so yeah. interesting that you actually love that. So when you love other things or whatever. So I'd say you 
have definitely the most preferences. I'm definitely more picky, mm -hmm. but you have way more preferences. Whereas I'm like picky, but go with the flow at the same time. I don't know. It's weird. Yeah. So how we navigate it is ever so often Amanda gets upset that I don't pick enough things or plan enough things. And then she goes through another cycle where she then remembers that she's the planner and she gets to do whatever she wants all the time. And mm -hmm. we go with the flow with her. And then she starts exercising that gift that she has for planning and starts planning things without getting upset. And then I go along with the flow with all the different <laughs> plans that we have. And sometimes spon spontaneously, spontaneously, I don't know, I don't know. Uh, spontaneously, that's pretty good. Spontaneously mm -hmm. yes. plan something and it's really cool. So yeah, that's generally the cycle, I think. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And I think also parenting has made me more like trying to find my own interests and like other things outside of work and different things that like I feel like are more fun. So that's been pretty cool. Um, but yeah, thank you guys so much for all the questions. I hope that you got value out of this podcast um, around being a power couple and parenting and navigating. There's no like exact exact book to tell you like what you can expect when you have a child. Um, but you know, now that kinks in 16 months, I feel like we're definitely in a good place. You know, once your baby like starts sleeping through the night and is on a good schedule, like life is really easy. And then, you know, then the baby changes and, you know, then they go through leaps and then they go through and you think your life's yeah. ending. And then all of a sudden they get through the leap and you're like, Oh yeah, this is what life's like normally. Like, this yeah. is amazing. And you cherish those moments a lot more. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. So much learning. It helps you grow as a person. Um, and yeah, becoming a parent, I think everyone should do it if they can. I think it's absolutely amazing um, just to know what this person can do for you. Because you can like read a book, but I feel like becoming a parent and also, you know, running a business is the biggest personal development thing you could ever do because it will test you in every single way. But if you can grow through it and get to the other side, you're going to be um, a better person, a better leader, um, and you're going to find more fulfillment in life. Awesome, guys. Well, thank you. This concludes the episode with Power Couple here. Amanda Barely being the co-host, me being a co-host, Nicholas Barely for the Billion Dollar Brotherhood podcast. Yes. YouTube channel. Make and sure you YouTube, if you have questions for us, drop them below. We will be answering them in the comments. Awesome, guys. Thanks so much again.